So today I'm going to be making a video since a lot of people have been asking for um, customized practice routines uh, or um, helping them uh, with exercise selection to target certain goals or fix certain issues. And obviously that would not make much sense to me, uh, neither time-wise and it would not make much sense to the people who have been asking just simply because I don't know where they stand. In most cases, I don't know where they stand in terms of your um, playing skill set. But since a lot of you have been asking um, what uh, a good routine looks like and how I approach it today, I'm gonna share with you my personal routine. And I'm gonna stop the screen um, for a couple seconds in between um, all the exercises to make sure you get the file, the PDF or Excel or whatever file. And you can take a screenshot and copy to see exactly uh, how I write down things, what exercises I use, and um, how I structure it, how I plan my goals, what expectations I have. And during the exercise, I'm gonna give you my analysis for that particular exercise, what I'm focusing on, why I'm doing, why I'm starting with this particular exercise. Since the routine is probably around 40 minutes long or something like that, I'm most likely gonna be uh, fast forwarding some of the bits just because I don't want to make this an hour long video. And um, also before each single exercise, I'm gonna give you a timeline at one of the corners right here, uh, which will give you um, exact time for next exercises if you feel like skipping or don't feel like listening um, to my analysis for that particular segment. So as always, make sure to share this video with your friends, give it a thumbs up, subscribe if you haven't, um, that would uh, do me a huge favor. And with that being said, um, let's crack on to the very first exercise of the video. Okay, so the very first exercise I start my routine with is the good old long tones. Now it's not only just a regular long tones, but a long low tones. We don't want to overcomplicate first exercise too much because the main focus is going to be here just to make sure we start feeling our lips, we get our lips running, there's some blood coming into our face, so we're basically warming up some muscles. But that being said, there are certain things that I'm going to be focusing on and there are some goals that I'm going to be trying to achieve, even though the main focus is just warming up. So this is something I like calling an anchor exercise. I have been doing this long tone sequence as my first exercise of the day for numerous years now. And uh, the reason why I call it an anchor exercise is because I want to try to create exact same circumstances for every single day, whether I'm practicing or I'm performing. As soon as I start playing this exercise, my body associates this particular sequence with being relaxed, with a sense of calm. And those are the circumstances you want to be uh, surrounding your body with before your practice sessions or before your performances. A sense of calm, sense of slowing your heart rate down, sense of focus, sense of clarity in your head. So I achieve this consistency day to day via tracking my tempo of my inhale, my exhale, how my posture looks. So pretty much what I'm trying to recreate is the same exact sensation every day. 
So what you're gonna see me do right now is I'm gonna start on low B flat and go all the way down to my lowest note. And even though you cannot hear the metronome click, I have it in my headphones, it's set on 60 beats per minute and I'm gonna be inhaling for two beats in and playing the long note for eight beats out. Now there is a reason for this particular number in terms of both inhale and exhale. I am a huge believer of functional practice, so I don't like taking these long four, five, six, seven, eight beat long inhales, which I would never, ever, ever use in any performance situation whatsoever. That being said, I don't want to start my day with uh, taking those super energetic, quick one beat or half beat inhales. I find that doing that in the very beginning of my warm up or practice routine stresses my body out and also does not help me achieve much. Two 60 beat per minute counts are more than enough for me to take a relaxed breath to the point where I can fill my full oxygen tank and expand my lungs. Now the reason for 8 count sustained notes is the fact that I don't like taking any rest in between my notes. In other words, as soon as I start my first note, I don't take any rest up until I finish the whole sequence. So it's a little deceptive because when you start 8 beats don't seem like a lot, but when you get into those uh, pedal tones and towards bottom of your range, suddenly after you've already played 10 long notes or 15 long notes, those um, eight beats start to count. So in the beginning, usually by the end of the note, I still have quite a bit of air left in the reserve, but towards the low notes, um, during the seventh and eight count, I'm close to fully out of my oxygen. I find that having eight beat count for the exhale helps me to balance out nicely the higher and lower notes in order for me to sustain the airflow throughout the whole sequence. So that is one of the reasons why I put a lot of emphasis on tracking tempo in this particular exercise. Another reason why it's important to track your tempo on this particular exercise is the fact that it helps you track the transition between your inhale and exhale. I'm really focusing on making sure the transition is very smooth and seamless. There's not a lot of body movement, there's not a lot of head movement, and most importantly, I'm trying to avoid any suspense in between my inhale and exhale. There are only two motions in my head when I'm doing this exercise. It's breathing in and breathing out. There's no suspending. Lastly, as I gradually go down towards my range and I'm getting more comfortable, my lung capacity is expanding. I try to inhale a little bit more air with each single note going downwards. Feel free to rewind this video to the very beginning of exercise and look at my body. It is visually apparent that my chest area is gradually expanding more and more as I go further towards the exercise, towards the end of the exercise. That is because my body is getting more accustomed to utilizing more air. The most important thing for me is that during these exercises, I am really aware of what's happening and I'm really aware of all these points which I just mentioned. So that is the whole purpose of me starting my practice routine with this exercise. And even though it's not a complicated exercise, it's a very simple exercise, it's not an easy exercise when you have certain goals and when you're targeting certain areas. One of the most important things in the routines that I usually customize is a gradual progression. So I gradually start adding more and more different aspects of playing as we go further towards the routine. So now our lips are warmed up, we are aware of our breathing, we are aware of our um, transition between inhale and exhale. It's time to add some fingers, get our fingers moving, and add a little bit of range as well. So this is gonna be a very simple chromatic pattern built out of two different sequences. It is very important to maintain that calm, relaxed sensation that we developed in the first exercise. The reason why I spend quite a bit of time playing those long notes is the fact that I wanted my body to get used to that sensation to where I have no longer any need thinking about it and it's all natural by now. 
at this particular moment, I'm going to be putting my emphasis in terms of focusing on making sure that my finger pillows are staying on the valves at all the time. And there's no point where I'm lifting my fingers unnecessary. So it's very economic motion, very relaxed motion, and there's a lot of dexterity and accuracy in my fingers. I want to make sure I'm hearing every single note of the chromatical sequence. And as I go up in the range, I'm making sure that the tone quality is consistent from note to note. This exercise is not only great for fingers, but it's great for your range because chromatical sequence is a very gradual sequence in terms of expanding range, both going upwards and downwards. There is a very little airspeed differential between note to note because it's in a semitone pattern. So there is way less room for error in terms of tone quality and missing the notes. Now, I don't track tempo in this particular exercise, but what I do on a regular basis is record myself. And that is because I want to make sure that I'm hearing every single note and not only pitch wise, but tone wise, it's very consistent and I'm hearing my beautiful tone, a pure, open, clear tone on every single note. A really cool thing that helps me to ensure that there's uh, maximum clarity in my notes is having that chromatical melody in my head. So I'm kind of almost singing that pattern as I play. So by the end of the exercise too, we already established calm, relaxed motion, a good amount of focus, good air movement, awareness of airspeed, and some finger movement. And considering the fact that we've only been playing for around 10 minutes, that's not the worst place to be at. So next we move on to a little bit more finger work. What you're gonna see me do now is gonna be a cycle of fifths. So again here I'm gonna be focusing on making sure that my finger pillows are always attached to my valves. There's very uh, low movement, it's very economic. Except for now we're gonna include a little bit more complex patterns with a little bit more of tricky combinations including third and fourth fingers which are usually the suspect problem fingers. Obviously if you're a trombone player and that's not not exactly relevant to you, feel free to skip the section. But if you're somebody who's playing a valve instrument, we're going to be doing the sequence to establish some finger speed. And obviously in order to track our speed, we need to use metronome. So this is where I start doing a little bit of maths in terms of programming and structuring. So sorry in advance if it starts getting a little bit too complex, but I just wanted to show you guys how much thought process I put in terms of uh, structuring my routines. So what you're seeing me play on a video is a 33 note pattern for each single scale. Now the maximum speed at which I can uh, play every single scale with uh, perfect accuracy is gonna vary from scale to scale depending on the finger combination complexity. However, I know that I can perform a full sequence of fifths, which includes all the scales at a top speed of 155 beats per minute. On this particular video, I'm only going to establish 90% of my top speed, which is 140 beats per minute. The reason for that is because currently I'm in maintenance stage of my fingers. In other words, I'm not trying to improve neither speed or stamina of my fingers. I'm currently trying to maintain the speed which I have. And I'm gonna get a little bit more into detail on why I'm doing that instead of trying to get better at it. But if I was trying to get better at it, I would play around with percentages and different sequences. So at the end of a routine cycle, 155 beats per minute would become my 95% of maximum speed instead of 100%. This would be the end result. Again, sorry, this is becoming a little bit too complex, but you're gonna understand way better what I mean by all this different math structuring at the end of the next exercise. For now, I'm just focusing on getting all the scales right. I'm focusing on the efficiency of my movement, I'm focusing on good sound, good accuracy, good breath timing, and making sure that not only my fingers are moving, but my mind is in complete focus at the task at hand.
Now we're going to be moving to our tongue exercises and you're going to notice that I'm doing a way higher volume of tongue playing and tongue practicing. As you get a little bit more advanced in your playing, progressing is not going to be as linear as it would be for let's say a complete beginner. So what do I mean by word linear? Now linear progression in this particular context basically means that the more you play the better you get. The downside of linear progression unfortunately is the fact that it's not going to be a very sustainable type of progression over an extremely long period of time. So basically what I'm saying is that it's going to work for complete beginners and therefore it is important to practice, practice, practice a lot when you start playing your instrument. Practice as much as you can. From my playing career I've seen some amazing uh, progress within a time span of one or two years uh, from people who just started learning the instrument and got to that a little bit more advanced level really quick by just working really hard. However, at some point you will notice that just pure volume in terms of your practice is not enough to get the job done. And on contrary, sometimes it can be very counterproductive. Now, why am I saying all this to you? Well, it's because I'm at this point where I cannot just simply get better at everything just by practicing very, very hard. I have to pick and choose which certain areas I'm going to try to break my ceiling or plateau. At. So at this particular time, most of my focus is being put towards improving my tongue technique. And uh, I'm making sure that all the other areas of my playing are being under the maintenance stage. I make sure that I do just about enough to maintain my finger speed, my finger dexterity, my range, flexibility, breathing skills and I split this type of progression in different phases. For example, I know that the last time I was emphasizing tonguing, I could consistently maintain my single tongue at around 118 beats per minute for extended period of times, and the same thing in terms of triple tongue at around 122 beats per minute. So my goal at the moment is to achieve a functional uh, single tongue at 120 beats per minute, and triple tongue, which would be uh, 124 beats per minute. So the key word here is functional and by functional I mean the speed which I can play at with uh, perfect clarity, perfect comfort and perfect consistency from day to day. So it's not just a matter of luck, it's consistent day to day to day. Now something that you also might have noticed by this time that the exercises that I use are very very simple. There's not a lot of studies or complex etudes or anything like that that I incorporate. And the reasoning for that is the fact that the simplicity of the exercises allows me to focus purely on the intricate details of certain aspect of my playing and in this particular case is going to be tongue. The benefit that you get from playing etudes and studies is the fact that you're obtaining new skills related to that aspect. You get different looks to tongue when you play arpeggios, play large intervals, play close intervals, play chromatic scales tongue, play low or high notes articulated, play with different accents. I've seen so many different etudes and studies throughout my playing career to the point where I don't need to obtain or I don't feel like obtaining any new looks or any new skill set to this particular aspect of my playing at this moment. In other words, I'm not trying to expand my toolkit. I'm not trying to add any more tools to the skill set I have. I'm trying to improve the skills that I already have. I get to play through six to 10 hours of new program each year. And that gives me more than enough circumstances where I have to use my triple tongue, double tongue, single tongue, flexibility, high range, low range, at a high level of complexity. And the question which is relevant to me is not if I can play something, is how well I can play that thing. And that is where you have to focus on small intricate details and therefore go to the very basics of that playing aspect and practice it in a very high volume. In case of this video is going to be tongue. With that being said, let's go back to the actual analysis of the particular exercises I'm playing. 
So what you're going to see me do right now is I'm going to play four variations of same exercise on the same scale for both single and triple tongue. The reason why I only use one same scale for all the variations is the fact that I want to simplify other aspects of playing such as fingers and range. I want to make sure that 100% of my focus is going to the tongue. So what are the things that I'm focusing in terms of tongue? At this point, I believe it's pretty obvious that I'm trying to get better at stamina and speed of my tonguing technique. Therefore, I'm trying to decrease the range of motion of my tongue movement. So how do I do that? Well, there is no way that we could visually observe what is happening with our tongue when we articulate. Therefore, you will have to put all your focus on trying to feel what is happening with your tongue. I'm always trying to think about the tip of my tongue and where is it. I have already explained in my previous videos that articulation or in other words, tongue interference with the airstream is being caused by the back of the tongue rather than the tip. However, tip is something that usually messes with articulations by blocking the airstream. That's why I try to make sure that no matter how fast, how high or how low I'm playing, the tip is always staying low in my mouth and is never blocking the gap in between my lips where the air is moving. Another reason why I picked one simple scale to practice all my variations on is because unlike the finger exercises here, I'm not thinking of the pitch at all. All I'm thinking is the syllable at all the times. So I'm making sure that in my head, I'm always saying ta, ta, ka, and that it never turns just to t, t, k. That would be really hard to focus on if we had some complex finger combinations on a complicated scale. Also, you would probably already notice that both single tongue and triple tongue variations start with a pretty consistent sequence of 16 notes, and then it gradually starts uh, having uh, a little bit of gaps in between the triplets or the 16 notes of the single tongue. In order to improve speed and stamina in those long sequences and longer patterns, you have to subdivide and eventually work on the smaller groups or smaller subdivisions. You have probably also noticed that each single variation I play a certain amount of times. Now, I normally split this into three day cycle. So if one day I'm playing more of the longer patterns, that means I'm gonna be decreasing the amount of times I'm playing that pattern. And in this case, you're seeing my um, day number three, way more repetition with uh, more subdivided groups of both triplets and single tongue patterns. Just to get a little bit deeper into this, what I did, for example, for my single tongue, I played my first variation twice, second variation three times, third variation twice, and fourth variation three times. And these are the variations I use for my day three. As soon as I'm gonna build up um, three times on my first variation, three times on my second variation, three times on my third variation, and three times on my fourth variation, this is where I'm gonna start increasing tempo and start from uh, one time on first variation, one time second, one time third, and one time fourth. Similar approach goes to my day one and day two, except for I'm using slightly different variations of this exercise. Thank you. 
Lastly, I move on to my flexibility exercises. And uh, this is again gonna be a one exercise based routine. Obviously the approach would differ quite a bit. Again, if I was trying to improve this particular aspect, but here I'm gonna be trying to maintain. So what you're gonna hear me uh, do is play this exercise three times, uh, starting with 90 beats per minute, then moving to 100 beats per minute, and then eventually moving to 110 beats per minute. So my total speed for this exercise last time I was putting emphasis on my flexibility ended up being at 123 beats per minute. So whenever I'm gonna be moving on to my flexibility routines, I'm gonna make sure that the focus is on breaking that speed. And when I say breaking, I mean in terms of functional speed, the speed that I would be able to demonstrate every single day in my practice, no matter if I'm having a great day or a bad day of playing. Now, there are a couple of things I'm really focused on here, and I know this is a flexibility exercise, but I'm putting a lot of emphasis on making sure that the timing of my tongue whenever I articulate the note is perfect, because otherwise I'm gonna be splitting that interval. And when I say timing, it's not necessarily hitting the note, but making sure that the tongue gets out of the way as quickly as possible, and making sure that it's never blocking the air passage. I'm also really focused on centering my embouchure. Now, the most important thing about centering the embouchure here is making sure that the gap in between the lips becomes really compact and really efficient. Now, an issue which is very common with less experienced players is whenever they try to center their ambusher a little bit more they do it with extremely tense lips rather than keeping their lips nice and relaxed but compact at the same time in other words whenever you try to have a great flexibility make sure that your lips are relaxed but compact at the same time or centered at the same time and that can become a little bit tricky uh, especially in more complex uh, sequences including more complex uh, ranges and etc Good news is that we have this measure called practice in order to fix these issues. I've done a couple of exercises which were not part of the plan, so I'm not gonna spend too much time discussing it. So this is more or less what my current routine looks like. It's not very complicated in terms of the exercise selection, however, there's quite a lot of complex analysis coming into it. And that is something that I definitely recommend you try and gradually incorporate more and more in your own practice routines. So this is going to be it for the video of today. Um, it's been a long one, but hopefully you enjoyed it. Uh, it's been a very healthy practice routine around 55 minutes long, out of which around 50 minutes of playing. So it was pretty intense. It wasn't complex in terms of exercise selection, but it was pretty hard to get through. There's a lot of thought that goes into planning my routines. And um, I take a similar approach with my private students. I, I like to be very analytical, very specific of goals, and very specific of methods we um, take in order to achieve those goals. If you're interested in joining my student group or you have any questions, feel free to shoot me an email. You'll find the contact details in the description box below. Leave a comment, give it a thumbs up, subscribe if you haven't already. You can also find me on Facebook and Twitter. And um, as always, I really hope you find this video informative. Stay safe, work hard, keep motivated. Until the next time, my friends.